Ladies and gentlemen, I have a beautiful 1851 Colt Navy for you today. This is an original piece, 36 caliber belt revolver as it was advertised back in the 19th century. And this is a quite early piece. You can easily recognize it by the small cut under the barrel for the paper cartridge and also the small round trigger guard. The date 1851 to name Colt's belt revolver, actually designed in 1847 but produced from 1850, is quite controversial. The 36 caliber models were rather called bat revolvers to differentiate them from the 44 caliber heavier Dragon models. The 1851 date was added later by the modern time collectors. My navy is martially marked, so it was originally delivered to the army and it has quite an early serial proving that the manufacturing date is 1853. This number is printed on all major parts of the revolver. Also, the inscription on the barrel ending with New York City rather than Hartford proves it's an early piece. The bluing is nearly invisible and the small brass cone front sight is also quite worn, proving a long service time. The nipples were also burnt out, but they were easy to replace. In overall, the pistol is in good shooting condition, ready for some serious range time. This is a perfect historical piece to test the original Colt 36 caliber bullet made by Mark Hubs or Eras Gun's excellent bullet molds. The Eras Gun Colt mold replicates the original 127 grain healed bullet. The heel diameter is 0.364 inches, while the largest diameter is 0.380, just as the original. I rolled some paper cartridges for the job, of course, what else? So we are getting close very very close to the original cartridge that was used for the 1851 Colt Navy revolvers. Probably this is the closest we can get today. Sam Colt's cartridge work was organized during the summer of 1855 by John R. Tracy to produce Colt's tinfoil cartridges for the open market and the army. The small factory employing not more than 30 persons was renamed to Colt's cartridge works in 1857. Nearly all employees were women here. Dealing with black powder was very dangerous, so no fire was allowed in this building to prevent accidents. Team was used to heat the rooms that was generated in an outer building. There were four teams in the works. The tin team rolled the strips of tin foil into tubes and then crimped them onto conical bullets. The lead projectiles were produced in the Hartford foundry and shipped daily to the cartridge works. The powder team poured fine 2F black powder charge into each tube. The good quality powder was also received daily from Colonel Hazard's powered mill, also very close to the Hartford Armory. Then the package team inserted 6 or 5 of the cartridges into a pre-drilled wooden block, after which the wrapping team wrapped the packages in paper with a wire pull at the top edge for easy opening. The complete pack was then finished with shellac to make it waterproof. Let me show you now how I roll these paper cartridges. What you see here is the cap and ball cartridge former that will help you making perfect paper cartridges for your percussion revolver. The process starts with waxing the mandrel and the die to prevent the paper from stucking to the surfaces. The hair curling or cigarette paper are cut to the exact dimensions provided with the manual. Just add the very little quantity of paper glue to the paper and roll it onto the mandrel. Add some glue to the bottom edge of the rolled case and attach the 1 cm paper circle to the bottom. Insert it into the die and move the mandrel around to push the glued surfaces together. Now fill the powder charge. My charge is 15 grains of 2F Swiss powder. Now apply some glue to the heel of the bullet and insert it into the mouth of the case. Roll it gently between your fingers to attach the paper to the bullet heel. You can now dip loop the bullet or apply the grease after you loaded it into the chamber. Technically any paper can work that are thin enough so the flesh can penetrate it. Always be sure to add as little glue as possible, this will speed up your manufacturing process. After a bit of practice, you'll be able to roll a cartridge per minute, so it is quite fast. In half an hour, you'll make enough cartridges for a day of shooting. The 
The pistol is in good condition, but not in perfect condition, and I will show you why. It is not easy to find a Colt revolver that has a perfect rifling and also perfect chambers. Now, this pistol has a perfect rifling, there is no problem. But I have problems with two of the chambers because the chamber mouses are damaged, which means that they will throw away the ball, whatever I do. Navy features a 7 groove left hand turn, progressive rifling, meaning that the twist rate at the breech is much slower than at the muzzle. Luckily, only the mouths of the two chambers are damaged, meaning that with the help of a chamfering tool, it can be repaired. But as I'm not planning to intensively use this revolver, probably I leave it as it is. But I have four that can be good, so let's check the accuracy of this pistol now. Today we shoot the pistols to 25 meters in competition, but in war this was probably not the case. We know about long shots with revolvers, but we can be sure that the effective tactical distance could not be more than 10 meters in the hands of an average soldier. The early Colt Navy revolvers had a really small cut under the barrel to allow the cylinder to rotate the chamber under the loading lever with the cartridge partially inserted. The Navy was intended to be used with conicals from the very beginning, so we would be surprised if the original Colt bullet did not fit. But as the Eras Gone molds produce exact copies, we don't have a problem here. They fit like a glove. Loading the chambers is easy if your paper cartridges are rolled to the proper size. That's why a cartridge former is also a great help. It will produce uniform sizes. The last step before capping is to apply a layer of grease on top of the bullet to help keeping the fooling soft. You can skip this part if you deep loop your cartridges prior. <laughs> The one and a half century old Colt did well, proving that the Colt bullets do match the Colt revolvers. As the front sight is really worn, I had to aim to the bottom of the paper to have the shots in the top of the target. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. If you like what I do, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there. If you wish to support me, you can do it two ways. First of all, you can support me by Patreon. The link is under the video also. But you can also buy or revolver cartridge formers and cartridge boxes. You can find it in our eBay store or on our webpage as well. So until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.